Hello and welcome to another episode of Control All Dammit. I'm Dammit to Hell, and today is Wednesday, May the 29th. I want to take a quick moment to apologize for the lack of a video on Monday. While yes, it was a holiday in the US, I did have every intention of uploading one, but Mother Nature had other plans. A big storm came through and it put my power out for hours, so apologies for that. But we've got some news to go over today, so let's get into it. Microsoft has confirmed what most of us already speculated that the redacted event following the Xbox Game Showcase is a Call of Duty Black Ops 6 reveal. It's also been confirmed that Black Ops will be a day one Game Pass game. It seems that users of the Game Pass app for iOS and Android received a notification saying, just announced Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is coming to Game Pass on day one later this year. The notification included a link to an unpublished blog post on Xbox.com. The post, which is still live, confirmed that the game was coming day one to Game Pass and that the event after the showcase was Black Ops Direct. PlayStation fans seem to be confused by this announcement as there is no mention of any other platforms, which honestly makes sense considering that this is an Xbox announcement and not one from Treyarch, Raven, or Activision. As far as I'm aware, there are still no plans for Call of Duty to be an exclusive title, so don't freak out. Just wait for Activision to make an announcement themselves. Hello Games have pushed out yet another free update to No Man's Sky. This one is titled Adrift, and it introduces a new expedition and new items to earn. In Adrift, you're all alone. There is no one else in the universe aside from you. No NPCs, no vendors, or anything like that. There's no intelligent life anywhere. It's all been abandoned. There's still life forms to discover and scan, so you're not completely alone, but let's be honest, you're alone. Adrift will also offer a new spacecraft called the Iron Vulture, a quote-unquote ghostly new frigate which you will be able to add to your fleet, but who's going to operate it? I've always leaned a little heavy on buying hard-to-find or craft items, so one has to wonder if there are no vendors. Does that also include the galactic terminals as well? Will this be the survival mode a lot of players have asked for? When you complete the expedition, you will earn a set of exclusive collectibles like the Scuttler Companion stealth paint for your starship, the ghostly frigate, and the iron vulture. Starting today, May 29th, Adrift will be available in-game for the next seven weeks. Smash Brothers, I mean Warner Brothers, I mean Smash Brothers adjacent featuring Warner Brothers characters multiverses, is back on Steam after a short hiatus. The game launched as an open beta back in 2022, but it was taken offline sometime later to allow the developers to prepare for launch. As of May 28, the game is live again with new additions to the roster, better combat, and in-game camera fixes. Currently, the game is sitting with a very positive rating, but recent reviews place it with a mixed rating. Many of the recent ratings cite performance issues such as crashes, poor frame rates, etc. And others feel that the game was in a better place before it came back, complaining of character balance and saying that the lag is bad and the beta felt more polished. Additional currencies have been introduced into the game, which is honestly to be expected in some form of a free-to-play game, but players are complaining about the obnoxious methods being used to showcase these items. Players are bombarded with a slew of daily missions, event-specific missions, battle pass missions, and some players are feeling overwhelmed. Have you played Multiverses since it relaunched? How has your experience been? After three and a half years, CD Projekt Red has completed their work on Cyberpunk 2077. In a PDF found on their website, there's an image that shows that as of the end of April, there are no developers assigned to or engaging with that game project. There were still 17 people that were working on it back in February. Development on Cyberpunk wound down after the release of Phantom Liberty in September, which, in my and many other opinions, was the savior of the game. Bringing a ton of players back and finding new ones along the way, 2.0 and Phantom Liberty were definitely game changers. Later, patches 2.1 and 2.12 were released and added the final bits of polish and tweaks. After many system overhauls, bug fixes, and overall improvements, the game has earned a 94% positive rating from recent reviews and is sitting at 83% overall positive on Steam. I have close to 500 hours in the game at this point, and while I did enjoy it for the most part at launch, it is in a much better place now. And if you haven't given it a try, I strongly recommend it. Now on a side note, in the updated graph, it shows that a little over 400 people are working on Polaris, which is the in-house codename for Witcher 4. 
Thursday, May the 30th, is the confirmed date for the next PlayStation State of Play. Scheduled for 6 p.m. Eastern and expected to run for about 30 minutes, the event will be live streamed on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. While there's no official word on what games will be shown, there will be 14 titles shown for the PS5 and the PSVR 2. It is expected that this state of play will lead into the following week in the Summer Game Fest and possibly more reveals there. With Destiny 2's Final Shape expansion coming on June 4th and Sony owning Bungie, I would expect to see something related to that and also possibly something regarding Marathon. Obviously, we're hoping to see some new and exciting game announcements and reveals, but personally, I want to see a lot more about Judas. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch. I really do appreciate it. I love reading all your comments and I'm especially appreciative of your thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video or the series, consider hitting the subscribe button to continue to allow me to bring news to you. Don't forget that I stream on Twitch almost every day. Stop by and check us out over at twitch.tv slash hell. If it's a day that ends with wide, it's after 3 p.m. Eastern. Chances are I'm live, so come hang out, see what we're playing, and join the conversation. But until we meet again, have a great day, and we'll see you on Friday. Be safe. Be sexy. Touch your butt. Goodbye.